Good morning. Welcome to PWR Today. It is now Monday morning. It's post-Father's Day 2020. I'm the man they call Meathead. It's June 22nd. And, um, you know, normally we like to jump in, have a good time, a lot of yucks, a lot of laughs. Let's get some business done real quick here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, make sure you're checking us out on Facebook and on YouTube and on, you know, Fight TV, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, all these other great places where you can download the podcast. Give us a like and a subscribe. Make sure you're getting the notifications turned on so that way you find out when there's new content coming or not coming. You'll always get an alert to let you know when the new stuff is up. Joining me this morning is going to be the lovely Linda Keg. Morning, Linda. Good morning, Meathead. Happy post Father's Day weekend. Yeah, I'm still living in the basking in the glory. Not the Carol basking, but I'm just basking in the glory. Or bask in your glory. <laughs> yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish we had funner topics to talk about. So, you know, we do a Monday through Friday thing, right? Um, a lot of news popped off Friday afternoon, and it has been an unbearably rough weekend as far as hot news and wrestling. But, you know, here we are Monday morning. We got to talk about it. The speaking out hashtag has come out, and it is a doozy uh, as far as the wrestling business is concerned. You know, I told you pre, um, pre-show pre when we were talking right before we started recording here that I couldn't find one website or one place to get all the names and all the accusations put together. I had to make my own list, and to be honest, I'm sickened by having to put together my own list because I'm staring at this list right now. It's it's too much. I mean, with all the shit that we got going on in the world and, you know, I'm oh. I've been conveniently, I guess, not talking about all the other stuff because I don't want to. That's what everyone else is doing. I want to talk about the positive wrestling was our escape. Yes. You know, yes, for, same, same. for the people, for the podcast, you know, that listen to these in the car. You know, I did a couple trips back and forth between Milwaukee and Appleton. For those that don't know, that's about a hundred miles. So it's, you know, a good hour and a half, two hour drive roughly depends on whose foot is on the pedal. Um, and I've had podcasts going the whole time. I love listening to my podcast, but I am sorry to have to give you this news, but we've got to talk about it. So speaking out, there have been multiple names that popped off. The first ones on Friday were the big ones. Uh, Friday Night SmackDown was going to have the debut of Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle is one of these stars that has been um, accused of sexual assault technically, or sexual harassment. And again, we're not lawyers. We don't play any on TV, but I'm just reading off what's been spoke about on the internet. Uh, Matt Riddle has been accused by a female wrestler of forcing her into sexual acts. Um, David Lagana, and I might be saying his last name wrong, the NWA vice president, has also been accused. He immediately resigned from NWA, and there will be no content coming out of that company. Um, Jack Gallagher, you know, the little English guy from NXT, also accused and was immediately released from WWE. You've also got guys from uh, NXT. There's Jordan Devlin. You've got, uh, and this is the big one that really kind of bugs me. Adult and adult assault is no different than any other kind of assault, but Velveteen Dream, and i got to be honest with you, Linda, and this is not the opinion of the PWR, the Pro Wrestling Board. This is my opinion. That dude's always kind of weirded me out with his thing, and it is um, alleged that he has been engaging in uh, pedophilia, which is basically underage. Whatever it is that he's doing, reaching out to minors, and I just, I, I don't know. I mean, there's more names. The other one that's a real big one, too, out there is Jim Cornette. Um, I don't know currently where he's working. I know he's got his podcast. Uh, and his wife mm-hmm. have been uh, accused of grooming. Now, Linda, I don't, I didn't want to put this in even my Google search. I, I want to keep my Google search clean. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, grooming and, uh, there are wrestlers that have come out that said that Jim Cornette will give you a bump in the business if you have sex with his wife and he gets the watch wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling is, um, let's be clear. Wrestling is a dirty business. We all know this, that wrestling is a very dirty business. It is not, um, it is not a kid's show. Um, wrestling is downright dirty sometimes. And we don't deal with it, specifically you and me, Linda, or uh, yourself and myself. We don't deal with this because, and I don't mean to make this like a love song for Dave Hero, but uh, we are pretty close with Dave. I I would think we're pretty close with Dave. I mean, I've known Dave for 20 plus years now. Uh, You're ring announcing with Dave on occasion, too. I don't know if you're doing every show, but you've been ring announcing. So we all know Dave, right? In Great Lakes Championship Wrestling. It's either A, 
that he shielded us from what wrestling really is, or B, he runs a clean show. I'm going to choose that he runs a clean show. I assume, because I know Dave, that the Absolutely. show is clean, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, and I, I believe that Dave runs his clean show because I can't say anything different. I mean, we've been, I don't know about you, but I've been to every Blizzard Brawl short of one. So, and I have not seen any shenanigans, no pun intended, of any kind. So, we know wrestling is dirty. We know what happens. I'm just glad that I have technically been insulated from it because of, you know, guys like Dave Hero who does things the right way. Right. And so seeing all these stories for the hashtag speaking out, I mean, I took the time just reading so many once I found out what was going on. And just to hear everything in such detail, it's just, wow. Um, Yeah. Like I said, I I honestly, what caught my attention first were um, headlines about Jimmy Havoc. And I was like, what's going on? And I was reading about some type of abuse and I was in the Mm -hmm. middle of you know, running errands at work. And I was like, okay, I'll catch up on this later. And then all of a sudden, like, boom, I'm like, wow, finally finding out more what was going on and about the hashtags from the, or the stories from yeah. both women and men um, yeah. in the industry. And yeah, just, wow. It's yeah. To, to read a lot of that in detail is just crazy. But I mean, I mean, and then more and more coming out. So obviously one's courage of sharing their dark story has, you know, opened the doors for others to share more. So, I mean, the result of all this, I mean, I know it's been a few days of the stories, but the result of what's coming next for some of the, um, you know, people involved, I mean, some consequences already have occurred, as you mentioned earlier, but we, yeah, I don't know. It's just crazy to again find out everything in detail. It's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, and again, you know, I haven't even mentioned all of them. I mean, there's uh, names out there like Joey Ryan and Mikey Whiplash. And, you know, there's also Travis Banks, Joe Coffey, Tyler Bate from NXT UK. Um, The Jimmy Havoc thing was, you know, um, you know what? The Jimmy Havoc thing, while not lumped, and lump's a bad word, but the Jimmy Havoc thing, um, I am happy to see that, you know, his substance abuse issues and his maybe his abuse as far as physical and mental and all the other things that he had done, he's instantly going to seek counseling. And AEW has suspended him while he seeks counseling, and they'll review it at that time. Uh, WWE, on the other hand, they've got a handful of talent. They literally need to work on something right now. Um, yeah. They are not a private company anymore. They're a publicly traded company. And to see, A, Jack Gallagher get immediately released, and B, the guy that's also involved in a big scandal show up on TV afterwards. You're telling me you didn't have time to edit that. I understand that they were taped prior. You could have done something. You could have aired something else that, I mean, it's 2020. Come on guys. It's not like you got to send a tape via FedEx or something like that. Mm -hmm. You could have edited that. Right. And then with Jack Hallaher, for example, um, WWE putting out the statement that was just short and brief, you know, not no future endeavors. Yeah, yeah it wasn't future endeavors. endeavors. Comment. So that being said, I mean that's that's where it brings the question, like what else do they know? Or right, yeah, yeah. So regarding Matt Riddle, like you said, I mean they could have typed in something else during the huge, you know, SmackDown debut. It could have not even like it's a, a live show. Yeah, they could have you know done some more promos packaging like they did when you know the first part of the whole covid thing changed the mm-hmm. you know face of how the show runs but um with matt riddle though i know he's one of the guys that have whether through their lawyer or through themselves have Correct. put a statement out regarding matt riddle had his lawyer uh, provide yeah. a statement yeah so i you know it's like do you give it a couple of days and see what comes about with this before. I mean, speaking from the promotion side, like if you're Vince McMahon or if you're Cody Rhodes or, you know, anybody else mm-hmm. having to decide, you know, what statement to make, what actions to take. Um, it's just a rather tough situation. And, you know, I'm sure right now they're working out what they, you know, need to do and who they have to speak to and, it's kind of something where each day, you know, coming out of this weekend, you know, with the hashtag still going on, like, mm-hmm. do they have to make a daily statement, you know, and are there pressures from fans or other corporations or other entities they're involved with? Like, you need to put something out. You need to do, take action on certain individuals. Yeah. I mean, a spotlight is right 
on professional wrestling and unfortunately in a very dark light right now. Sure. And, uh, you know, with it being WWE, we'll talk about WWE because they are, you know, they've made themselves number one in the world, right? They've made yeah. themselves the biggest company. You also get the light shined on you first. And you have a huge chunk of these stars that are these performers that are named in these, you know, speaking out hashtags. Um, you are also publicly traded. So if you're a stockholder, you're demanding action instantly. I mean, I go back to, and I don't know if it was a year to two years ago. I want to say it was a couple years ago, at least when uh, uh, Enzo uh, was released. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was probably about two years ago. It might have even been three years ago when um, Enzo was released. He did not get future endeavors because of technically what he had done now. Do the company does the company you know let them go right away when they know about this and they're working on it? I mean, you got to really ask. And I'm going to be honest, and I, I'm sorry if WWE is listening, but um, Vince McMahon has had allegations too. And this is again, we talk about the dirty business of wrestling. This is not new. This isn't something like, oh my god, this is the first time this has ever happened. They were perfect up until this Friday. Yeah. They're not wrestling. Uh, the Carney. I mean, it, it's not new. So the best path. My opinion, again, not PWRs, my opinion is best path is own it, acknowledge it, correct it, do what you got to do, but you need to own this right away. Right, and I'm just going to mention one of the accused, and from what I was reading and seeing on Twitter and whatnot uh, regarding Joey Ryan, um, he was yeah. probably one of the more... Uh, I like this statement, worse. actually, and not that he was right. I mean, what he did was right, but, you know, his statement, mm -hmm. he... He explained it doesn't make it right mm -hmm. but he explained it yeah i mean and from what i was reading too he probably had some of the most explicit details or maybe the most mm -hmm. um accusations on him just from what i was looking you know on twitter with the hashtag and as of tonight i don't i don't know if he deleted his twitter or if twitter removed he did him. no he deleted okay. it yeah. okay yeah he's probably I mean, being blown up yeah i mean there was a time where I followed Joey Ryan right around uh, yeah. uh, gut check in TNA because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the guy was funny to me. But, yeah, you know, I mean, it was the did, gimmick. The, yeah. <laughs> the dick flip was not for me. And it's crazy how like his gimmick is relating to things going on yeah. right now with the accusation. So it's just kind of like, I mean, the, you see a lot of people commenting like, well, who who didn't see this coming? Like it's. And again, yeah. I'm not trying to rail on Velveteen Dream. He might be a nice guy. But I'm telling you, something was, something just creeped me out about it. And, you know, it, in wrestling, the, the term is always, you know, you want to be the best professional wrestler you can be, just take yourself and turn it up to 10. There you go. Yeah. Which creeps me out. Yeah, and regarding more of the accused speaking out or making some type of statement about the situation. Um, I am curious to really hear what Jim Cornette really has to say. I mean, he's got that very open and vocal platform with his yes. podcast to make a statement on just the entire situation and about himself and his wife, or will he, you know, be mum about this and just not discuss it? it? I mean, it's, it's funny you say those two things because I think they contradict each other. Jim Cornette be mum about it. Yeah. Yeah, I just so I mean, it, it's unless it, it's wrestling, so unless it's the ultimate work, you know, to draw listens and downloads to uh, the, uh, 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 uh. we know it's not okay, it's not. Uh, and if Cornette wanted to do the right thing, he should say, Look, here's the details of it. I don't need to, I don't even want the details to be honest with you, unless it's a you know, story again from the drive through at Wendy's. I don't want the details. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's a guy that, I mean, again, living the gimmick, you know, kind of out there, outlandish, doing what he does. And now we know more about what he does and it's creeping us out. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, could it be that the, you know, upper management at the promotions are have already spoken to the talents that are accused and are saying do not speak of this do not have a lawyer right. speak out on behalf of you right. we that's are going to the... handle this internally like who knows right and that's the dirty part about wrestling i guarantee you that these are not like oh my god it's the first time i'm ever hearing of it they've heard of it i know they've heard of it 
There's no way you can't know about it. I mean, you you talk to some of the older boys in the in the business, they'll tell you that stuff had been going on for years, maybe with this person or that person or whatever. I mean, they won't give names, but it's always been that way. And that's been a mentality in the country. Again, I don't want to go into this whole thing, but you know, protecting the business is something we've always heard. You know, brotherhood is a whole, and you keep that stuff internal. So I'm not going to read this list again, but we know that these are not the first time. This is probably something they they've heard of before. You know, um, I, I do appreciate people, me personally, that come out and admit to something they may have done if they didn't do it, if they hurt somebody. I found, I mean, I'm working on it. Joey Ryan may be 100 percent in the wrong and everything he's done, but he led as an example of somebody that's trying to be better. At least that statement read that to me. It could be a prepared statement. It could be a lie. I don't know. But Mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing I need to hear people. When I do stuff wrong, if I don't apologize, my apology, I'm working on myself. I'm trying Mm -hmm. to be better. Of course, as we all should. Right. So, Linda, it's not the kind of conversation I like to have with you on a Monday morning. I like to talk about putting the little meathead in the cup. and. Oh, yes. That's right. I like hearing that jingle in my head, you know? (laughs) The best part of waking up is me that in your cup cup. with Linda. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I I had to add some levity to it. I I just can't do this down stuff. It's not me. If you've listened to me, if you paid attention to me, you know what I did over the weekend? We got to get away from this, these stories. You know what I did over the weekend? I, um, I was poking around in YouTube and you know what came up? The 2014 draft results. The 2013 draft in 2014. Okay. Do you remember it? The one I won? Yes. I love that episode. It's the <laughs> best probably 20 minutes. I mean, just watching how hot David Hero gets <laughs> when he realized that he had won, but he didn't because I won. I mean, he called me by my full name. He said oh. something about my mother. I mean, it was pretty funny, actually. We have many shenanigans yeah. in our fantasy draft episode. So definitely speaking, something I was oh. gonna say speaking of shenanigans and you specifically the draft for that draft, uh the one with Damien with the slick Rick look where he had the <laughs> uh patch over his eye and in the wheelchair. Yeah. Uh yeah. I I legit lost it when he poked your eye out and then he had to <laughs> hold your head and said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't kayfabe. That happened. <laughs> no, it did. It, it did happen. And I mean, I'm looking at him going, oh, my God, what would I have done? Yep, I would have. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to shoot your eye out. I'm sitting here wearing a patch and I almost took out your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you just you can't make this beep up. You no, know? <laughs> no. Yeah. One more thing I want you guys to look for on YouTube in the PWR um, uh, library, if you will. Linda, can you help them at least find what was the one that you swore in a, I think it was Leo, it's Leo Ocean, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What was the uh, one that you swore in? It was an episode of Prime Time that would have been oh, maybe like two, three, oh, and actually before that, because obviously when Damon, Damien was in China, um, it was a episode where we had, oh, Damien pissed me off for some reason, and I just had to spew off in my native tongue um and honestly what i said was one through ten because i don't know my ocean like i did when i was a kid (laughs) (laughs) but again to hear you just snap off because we know professional you know uh on-air talent linda k to hear you snap off into some of it that was amazing we have the uh it's one of the biggest blooper moments and we haven't posted on our YouTube page as well, like the after portion, how we kept filming before we had to do the takeover because it just was <laughs> too much. You have to, everybody listening, take a, t- a second to look that up if you could find it where it says Damien loses it or something to that sort. And okay. it, it, yeah. so, laughs. Yeah. Ever. So, I mean, we're going through what we're going through in wrestling yeah. right now. And as a diversion, I, I beg you to go to YouTube Go to the PWR page and just look up the stuff. The drafts are always great. You know, it's funny that Damien would always talk about how he's won all these drafts. You know, way back in the old school days, I used to whip his ass like every year in the draft. I mean, it wasn't even funny. <laughs> well, now, you know, we, we've got the trophy involved. We've got higher bragging rights. We've yeah, and got that's more why I'm glad I'm back home. To... Yeah. 
All right. Well, Linda, I'm glad to end on a high note like that. You know, I'm glad you guys are listening. Uh, make sure you stay safe, stay healthy. Um, wear your mask if you have to. I'm not a fan, but I wear it when I'm told to. So mm -hmm. make sure you're covering yourself. Make sure you're staying safe. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow morning for Linda K. I'm the man they call me dead. Thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.